Hello, welcome back. This is Craig and we're going to work with our clear core a little bit more today. Uh, I did receive a box from Technic and it has a uh, Atmel ICE as well as the programming cable for the clear core board which is that um, Tag Connect connector and I also ordered a CCIO 8 expansion, IO expansion module. We'll show you that as well. But first I need to make a correction. In my last video where I did the unboxing I referred to the Technic uh, motor offerings as step servos. That is incorrect. Um, the motor offerings, namely the clear path line of motors from Technic, are true servo, uh, true servo motors. And um, I got that confused because <clears throat> I've used these motors in the past. This is from a company called JMC, and this is a NEMA 23 motor. And up here on the top, it has the um, uh, control electronics and an encoder back here on the back. I've used these before. They work great because they do offer closed loop performance on a stepper motor. But my referring to a Technic motor as a step, step servo is incorrect. It's a true servo. I'm going to go ahead and order some of those um, clear path motors from Technic. We'll get those in here and we'll kind of see how they integrate in with the clear core as I make my progress through doing the Gerbil port. All right, let's get started. We'll start with the unboxing and then we'll go ahead and program our clear core using an alternate method. The previous video we used USB to do the, the, uh, to do the firmware update. We're now going to use an ICE and we're going to show you that that's much more reliable than the USB method. All right, let's get started. Here's the programming cable. It's a Tag Connect TC2030. And here is the microchip or Atmel ICE. And inside here are some cables. Here's the Technic CCIO8. I'll go into more detail in future videos, but I'll go ahead and give you a brief viewing of this here. It's another piece of quality equipment. From Technic. Here's our clear core. We need to remove the cover. There's a torque screw right here. A wise man would go get a torque screw and do that, but I'm too lazy to go find my set. So I found a little screwdriver that fit in, and fortunately, it wasn't really tightened down very, very tight. So here's the board. It's a double-sided board, so there's parts on the on the bottom side of this board. But on the top side, what we're interested in is the programming uh, footprint right over here. Let me show you this cable. So this cable has uh, stainless steel alignment pins, uh, gold-plated programming pins and those little attachment feet. Those attachment feet fit through four holes in the circuit board and kind of clip into it. And the location on the board is between two connectors, some of the I.O. connectors along the top and then the XB or Zigbee, the XB uh, connector there. So I'm trying to use a little screwdriver to kind of force those feet in and I fuss with that for about five or six minutes and I'm going to resort to using some pliers. The first pliers I used, were I couldn't grab a hold of them the correct way. These ones actually grab it in a more parallel, the jaws move in a parallel fashion. So this will let me move all four pins at the same time. However, I couldn't get the, couldn't get the width to fit in there. It's the same problem as my big fat fingers. So I got to come in higher in and so by looking at this it's not really going to press the feet the correct way and these pliers are so big i'm afraid i'm going to put enough force on it to really kind of break those pins off so i'll show you one of the uh, projects i came up with it's a fusion 360 pair of pliers and i published it over at grabcad so these are some custom 3d printed um, 3D printed pliers to actually grab a hold of that TC2030 
and we'll go ahead and show you here's some pictures of it here of my 3d printed version so we'll go ahead and hop over to the video and I'll show you how I used them oh this is a fusion 360 project but I also have the STL file if you want to print a copy of these pliers for yourself so here's what they look like and it's a uh, flexible because the uh, that top pin doesn't act as a hinge and there's also a recess so you can have the uh, ribbon cable fitting through the little slot there which enables the pliers to come straight down on the jaws and then the tips of the jaws only press in on the legs and you still have a pretty good pivot so now the challenge is getting the alignment pins to fit in and all the feet while you're pressing it together to fit into the board. You can kind of see how tight it is right there, but there's the uh, our target for our programming cable. So you kind of get it in there and you get the alignment pins to align and then you squeeze on it and it goes in. and it's secure and it's going to hold all six of those pins we plug it into the ice we plug the ice into the computer and then we plug in the ethernet cord okay i'm back over to my computer and uh, i'm going to talk for a few moments about embedded development uh, i prefer to keep it as simple as possible so i don't actually use an ide i just use an editor and inside the editor, I can compile the uh, binary from the embedded project, and then I can also flash it. Um, so I prefer to work at the makefile level and the command line. Now, a lot of developers don't like that. They like to use an IDE with, uh, you know, code completion, syntax highlight, and all that. And if that's the way that you prefer to do it, uh, more power to you. And so if you use Atmel or Microchip Studio, or you use uh, Platform I.O., or you use uh, Eclipse, or you use Cube, or you use Embed, whatever that is, that's, a, that's the environment that you prefer to use. Uh, but in all my examples over here, I'm going to basically uh, only show the compilation process and show the flashing process. I'm not going to present any kind of IDE uh, uh, from that respect. Now, I prefer just to use the Arduino uh, environment. I don't actually use the IDE, but I use the, uh, there's a project called Arduino CLI, which allows me to, to compile Arduino sketches right from the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, show, for all future examples, I'm just going to show the compilation process and the flashing process just to keep things simple. Uh, all this code is actually in a uh, GitHub repository, and we're actually going to do a check out of that and see how it kind of we're just going to compile it and run the exact same examples I did last time, which is a blink and the UD. So let's go over to the computer. So over on my computer, I have two windows open, and in this window, what I'm going to do is um, make this a little bit bigger, and we're going to um, we're going to first clone the GitHub repository. So right now I have it, it's called Clear Core Projects over on Get, on my GitHub page. Uh, so we'll go into that and there's a license file and a readme and a source file, source directory. So inside of here we have a Blink and a UDP example. So we'll go over to run Blink. And we'll first show you the make file. So the make file actually runs, like I said, Arduino CLI. And it uh, it just basically runs the compile option for for the CLI, and it needs to know this this um, this B directive here. This is how our the uh, this is how Arduino compi compilation tools know what what board you actually have selected. And if you're in the IDE, this is where you select the board itself. And then I have a I've set up a build path here, so it builds it in my temp directory. Um, then uh, it uses uh, OpenOCD uh, to actually flash it. OpenOCD is a program that it works with a lot of um, programming devices, and the Atmel ISIS portion is 
is part of the open OCD so, um, it, of its ability to use it. So this uh, this is a clear core config. We'll show you that in just a minute, and then I I uh, go ahead and um, uh, use the binary, and then I I verify it. Now one last thing. Let me make this full screen for just a second because this this is an important thing. I'm going to go over here and talk about this uh, this address here, which is 4,000 in hex. Uh, this SAM device is a 16k uh, bootloader that's already flashed in it. And that is actually in a protected portion of the flash. We don't want to write into that. In fact, uh, you have to twiddle some uh, flash bits to probably get to be able to write that. So we're not going to mess with that. Um, but because it's 16K, if you think the offset into the flash space, it works out to be that your compiled binaries need to be flashed at address 4000 in hex. So that's what that 4000 is. Uh, then I also have the ability to use OpenOCD to uh, do actually do a board reset. So if I have a problem, I can actually um, I can actually reset the board from the command line as well. And then I have the the last target down here is the, is I can clean the clean out or remove the board directory, the build directory. Uh, so this clear core config file is all the basic uh, configurations that OpenOCD needs in order to actually understand what programmer it's connected to, some various types of things. So um, this, 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 uh, I haven't run OpenOCD in quite some time. So it, well, plus I've never run anything with a, a, a microchip SAM device. So this, this file here it took me about uh, two days to figure out and get this working uh, correctly. And one, one thing that, that kind of held me up for a really long time was this particular adapter, uh, the Atmel ICE, for some reason, does not like to run faster than one megahertz um, or 1000 kilohertz. Uh, most most uh, pe most examples from like Adafruit as well as some microchip stuff, uh, they're able to run Open OCD. Well, their configuration file is defaults to two two thousand here, and I, I wasn't able to get that to work. Um, and then these last things down here is I disable all the port creation things that Open OCD support uh, allows, so that I, I don't I want this to be as fast as possible. So I just turn everything off. Okay, then the blink, uh, the blink script here. Uh, you know, it's a traditional blink script where it sets the pin mode output here, and then we turn the turn the LED on, turn the LED off, and then I have a, a delay of a duration which is set up here and undefined. So we'll go ahead and flash this right now. Let me uh, go back to this screen. We'll bring up the board. So so that's the make process there, and. So now we'll just flash it. So that's a big flash. And this is this is the output from OpenOCD running. And you'll see that it actually started programming it. And now you'll, it's done. And you can see that the LED on the board is blinking. Just to prove to you that, that this worked, we'll go ahead and change that blink duration. It's set now to 100, uh, 100 milliseconds. But we will change it to a second. And we'll go ahead and flash it again. And then you'll see the duration of that flashing changes. Okay, so that, that was successful. So we're going to go up and look at the UDP example. Same thing, this make file and this config file are exactly exact duplicates from uh, the, um, the, blink, uh, the blink directory. So here's the UDP uh, sketch. And this UDP sketch is actually a direct copy of the Technic Ethernet UDP example code. I just pulled out all the comments so we can actually have a readable thing when we're actually uh, when we're doing this um, these, this example. Uh, so the first thing is uh, it sets up the the actual MAC address of the Ethernet uh, controller, and this is the default MAC address that all these uh, Arduino uh, projects use. This particular SAM device, I believe, does not have a 
the individual MAC addresses flashed into the CPU. Uh, so this will have to be programmed as a unique uh, MAC address into the, you know, like a, the emulated serial EEPROM inside the SAM device. Uh, so, you know, because it's not a good idea if to have the, you know, well, it won't work at all. From an Ethernet standpoint, you want to have this unique. This is the address it's going to use. If I use uh, the fixed addressing, I, I basically uh, disable U, uh, DHCP. And then here's the, uh, the local port that we're going to connect to. Um, down here, we're saying using UDP, using DHCP, say no. So we're going to do our fixed address. And it goes through and it, it, you know, if it's using DHCP, it prints out what the DHCP address is. If it fails, it prints out on the serial port that it fails. And down here, if, if, if you're doing fixed addressing, we go ahead and bring up the Ethernet device and print out the, uh, the, uh, the, the information. And we do hit, then we, uh, we start our program, we open the port, and then we uh, actually turn the LED uh, built in back to an output pin. Down here, uh, we grab in a packet in our loop, and if the packet size is greater than zero, we'll go ahead and process that packet. This, uh, this piece of the code here prints out where the packet came from and what port it came from. This slide here reads the packet. Actually, this, this uh, transfers the information in from the packet back into a local, a local uh, um, a buffer called packet received. And we go ahead and print that back out on the serial port so you can, uh, you can see what came in. Here's, a, here's how we're going to process the reply. This is actually the reply code here. So I put a little for loop in here that cycles through all the individual characters in the received packet and capitalizes them. And then uh, this, this thing here actually sends out the packet to the, uh, um, the, the uh, over the UDP port. Then I added two more lines down here. If the packet received, basically the first character is a zero, I'll turn the LED off. And if it's a one, it will turn it back on again. So we'll go ahead and compile this. We need to do several things all at once here. So let me get this set up. So the, um, the clear core, when you open a serial port in the Arduino world, it basically uh, comes up as a new serial port on the host. Um, it's not always there because sometimes you you run it and you don't. But during the flashing process, it it basically disables that ability, so the host thinks that you've unplugged the serial, the uh, USB port. And during that time, you can't run the um, the terminal emulator will die because the serial port went away. So if we look at this um, this code one one more time, I put a delay right at the beginning of setup, so that it opens up the serial port and sets its baud rate. And this delay here enables me as a developer to jump to a different window and uh, open the serial port terminal emulator. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash a device. When the flashing is done, I have three seconds to open the uh, terminal into terminal emulator. All right, so we'll go ahead and make this. And up in this window, I have an alias set up for uh, COMM, which uses microcom. It opens up uh, TTY ACM0, which on my host is the serial port that the clear core is presenting itself as, and it, it sets the baud rate to uh, 115. So we'll go ahead and flash this thing here. Oh, we've made it, and uh, we'll go ahead and flash it. And up here, I'm going to get ready. So when this bottom window gets done flashing it, I'm just going to go ahead and open the serial port. So I have the serial port open, so now it's 
okay so this is this command right here so this is telling me the IP address it's going to be at so let's uh, make these windows a little bit smaller So down here, I'm going to run netcat, uh, and I'm going to send out a UDP packet. So we're going to go to 192.168.0.177 and then port 8888. So we're going to type in, uh, all right, this is a test. All right, so down here, we got the uh, reply back, which is a capitalization of what we sent. And then up here, uh, this line right here is showing us that it came from IP address number seven on my local net. And uh, this is the port that they came from. And then here is the uh, text that it was received. So that's all working. So go back down to one thing. Remember I can turn on the LED or turn it off uh, if I send a zero in the first character. So if I send it a one, it should turn the LED on and there you go it's on and if I send it a zero it's off okay one thing to notice here is let's get out of the um, let's get out of NC here I'm gonna go ahead and make it again I want to talk about one more thing here um, well let's let's go over to blank I want to talk a little bit more about the f the uh, binary flash size so go ahead and compile blank. Now this is really the, almost the simplest code that you can run. And this sketch, the binary file itself is 135K, which is quite large. It's almost 26% of the flash is used just for blank. Now, uh, the, the, way, the technic configuration file that's created uh, actually compiles it runs GCC on the embedded on the Arduino uh, using the Arduino tools it compiles that code with the debugging symbols turned on and that's going to result in a, in a larger version of the binary file to get put over on the flash uh, I'm gonna spend some time figuring out how to minimize the size of this thing because if I'm already using up I mean for my examples here, that's going to be fine. But ultimately, you know, when you want to ship a product, you don't want the uh, you don't want uh, debugging symbols turned on. Um, so I'm going to work on on minimizing the size of that. So now, if we you know, let's go back to what we talked about. Uh, we actually did our unboxing. We took a look. We figured out that my fat fingers won't be able to pro. Uh, Put the programming cable in that, that tag connect can enable so i 3d printed a, a little custom pair of pliers and those work fine for both inserting and removing the um, tag connect from the circuit board we downloaded some code from the github repository and we compiled blank and UDP, udp example again just using the command line and using the arduino cli and I just want to keep it as simple as possible. So that's the way I did that. I actually did order some clear path motors. I got three of them. I got two of the same kind. And then I got one that has a little bit higher torque, probably about two and a half times the torque. And then I ordered a series of equipment. I ordered the Technic power supply, the cabling. I ordered all that stuff. We'll go over that when it comes in. But for today, what I try to do is to just go ahead and show you that it is possible to easily get this set up on using the Arduino tool sets. And you can do the same thing over in uh, Microchip Studio as well. Well, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And we will continue on our quest to get Gerbil running on this clear core device. All right, let's end it here.